we're going to talk about how to find and do work that you love. We can all do work. We all can make money, but we want to do something that's purposeful, that we follow our heart and our pursuit, and we want to be able to make money doing that. So this is another whiteboard session on a Friday. Stick around. We're going to get right into it right now. Okay. So the prompt for this was really, you've just graduated school, and now you have to make these big decisions on what you're going to do with your life. Are you going to do something that you love? something that you're good at, something that pays really well, or something that the world needs. And this is kind of a tough thing. So here you are. You've just graduated. Graduated. Congratulations, by the way. You made it through a four-year program. And which route are you going to go? Which way are you going to go? And I think the way that the world has told you is you must think of these things as isolated things, that if you do something that you love, you're an artist, you're a poet, you're a writer, you're a musician, something like that. But that means you're going to starve and it's going to be very selfish because the world really doesn't need you to do this thing. Jonah, is there something that you love to do? That film you're like, film and photography. Let's write that down. So Jonah likes film and photography. What about you, Jaden? I would love to do web design. Web design? Well, but you can't add to make money. Would you do web design if you made no money? Maybe. Okay, so let's put that there. And I'll put one of my own in here too. Okay. When I grew up, I loved to draw. So I thought what I really want to do is to draw comics. That's really what I wanted to do. I love this. The only problem with me drawing comics is I'm not that good of a drafts person. I didn't have any life drawing classes or figure drawing classes. So this was not something I was good at. And I could see that there were other people around me who are more natural born talents in terms of drawing. Are we okay? Okay, great. So you need to do something that you're good at. So Jonah, what are you good at? What comes easy to you? What do you do better than a lot of people? Editing. Okay, this is good. I'm glad the answer is a little bit different. Okay, so yours is editing. And then Jaden? Wireframe? Yeah. Okay, like, um, what is wireframe to most people? It's like a skeleton of your website. Okay, so I would just write wireframe then. Mm -hmm. Wireframe. Okay, so some level of self-awareness helps right now. So we wrote down editing, wireframe, things that I'm good at. I think I like business. I think I've known that for a really long time. Some people think, oh, you're, you've discovered that you want to be an entrepreneur and you discovered that after college? I said, no. When I was growing up, I always wanted to try to figure out how I could do something that was valuable to other people and to sell it for more than what it cost me to make. So in the beginning, I sold candy when I was in junior high. I sold Ninja Stars, which is illegal, so don't do that. Anything I can get my hands on to make that I could hopefully inject a little creativity or give somebody something they need, needed, then I would be able to make money. So I was thinking like, well, I'm pretty good at doing business stuff, I think. And the more I learned, the better I got at doing that. Okay. So then this is usually the voice of your mom or your dad or somebody who's taking care of you, your guardian. They usually want to protect you from harm. So they advise you to do things that pay well. So they usually take a look back into history and say, historically speaking, what has paid well. So Jonah, what did your parents tell you? You should go do this. I'm pretty sure they didn't tell you to do film and editing. They certainly did not. <laughs> So we can't really hear Jonah, but he said they certainly did not. They didn't say that. So what did they say for you? Mechanical engineering. Whoa, that's a good say for like mechanical engineering. And okay. And they would have been really proud of you if you became a mechanical engineer. I'm pretty sure of it, right? <laughs> they would have been. <laughs> and not. Okay. Hey, while we're on the fly here, Ricky, can you help us out since you're here? Can you get us a wireless mic in case Jonah and yeah. Jaden want to participate? Okay. Mechanical engineer. That's fantastic. And did it, did you break your parents' heart? Yes. <laughs> and what was the problem? Why, why didn't you uh, fulfill their dream for their son? That's what happened? Not what I to do. Did you even try? Yeah. So you uh, worked hard at school, tried to get good oh, grades. Oh, you didn't work hard at school. So when you say you tried, what did you try to do then? Oh, so you did apply to a school to become a mechanical engineer? Yeah. What school was that? University of Houston. So you got into the school? Yeah. Well, not for that school, but like just to go on that path. 
I see. So you showed up, you're like, this is not for me. Okay, so they helped you to pick a, a career that would pay well, but you didn't feel any love for it. You were probably not good at it either, but they said it would pay well. Yep. And Jaden, what about you? Um, my parents told me to become an engineer too. An engineer. An IT guy. An IT person. Okay, I like IT since we won't use that. So an IT person, they thought that would pay well. It would make sure that you're not going to starve. They don't want to see the people they love get hurt. That's just the bottom line. That's why parents do what they do. Right? We understand that. Okay. For me, my parents wanted me to become, this is pretty typical of immigrant uh, families, a doctor or a lawyer. And believe it or not, when I took my high school, uh, high school aptitude test, and I, I filled it all out, and it told me I should be a stockbroker. So I thought maybe, maybe I need to be a stockbroker. They seem to do okay an investment banker, a hedge fund manager. Yeah, that seems right. Now, did any one of your influences or did you ever consider what does the world need from you? What does the world need from you? Oof, I did not. You did not. Did you, Jaden? No, I didn't. You, you have to talk into the mic, Jaden. Go ahead. Yep. So the oh. world didn't need, nobody thinks about this, right? Yeah. And this is usually the missing component. Now, uh, some young people today, um, who, who's the girl who, Greta, who sailed across? Greta Thun Thunberg? Greta Thunberg? She sailed across the Atlantic solo? Something no, like that? she sailed with a team. Oh, she sailed with a team. But she's like a very young girl, and she's very mission-driven, super confident, self-aware human being at a, such a young age. It's amazing that somebody like that exists in the world. And she's speaking out against climate change, right? No, she's and speaking so, for climate change. Uh, yeah. Climate change is either bo both good or bad. Right, speaking out against climate change, that the, the the impact that humans are making, kind of our carbon footprint and destroying the world. Okay, there are a lot of people that are upset. So, what does the world need? Very few of us ever even think about this. And where is this all going? Let me introduce you to this concept. If you're not aware of this already, the concept is a Japanese concept. It's called ikigai. And hopefully I've been able to copy paste correctly in Google. And I hope my Japanese friends, konnichiwa, uh, that this does say ikigai. Now, you guys that were laughing at me about my Japanese pronunciation, I did have somebody who was of Japanese origin say, thank you for saying that. Thank you. But you, Ricky Ricardo, was laughing at me so hard. Uh, careful with the mic. It's still hot, right? So ikigai is this concept about, it's a Japanese concept. And it means thing that you live for, a reason for being a reason for being. And it's broken down into four circles like this. It's kind of a four circle Venn diagram. And it talks about what do you love? What does the world need? What do you get paid money for? And what are you good at? And we're going to talk about this in a second. So we talk about um, reason for being. A reason for being. Should I switch colors or is the black okay? Is it okay? Okay. The reason for being a thing that you live for. This sounds pretty good. This almost feels like a millennial concept because it, it just like in our generation, it was just about going to work and that's what you did. You did your nine to five and then you live for the weekends. You become a weekend warrior, right? So the weekends were your escape from work. And it seems like we're in a different era now where the thing that you love, the thing that you're good at, should be also the thing that you get paid for. And if we can design our lives around that idea, we'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier than we've ever been. And this is the key. Okay. So what happens if you love something? If you really, truly love something, and the world needs this. Remember the world? It's like this. The world needs it, and you love it, but you don't make any money, and you're not actually very good at it. This is considered a mission. And a lot of people do this. Missionaries do this. People that are very religious go out into the world. And, and people who support um, disadvantaged people, uh, they go out because their purpose is filled, but they don't make any money doing that. Now, if you're good at something and you love it, but it doesn't, you don't get paid for it, that would be considered your passion. So I think... Ricky is really good at baseball. He does love it, but he didn't get to that upper echelon 
for whatever reason. And it, only a small, small percentage of people actually make it there. Like, what is it, 0.01%? Very small percentage of people make it into professional sports. We get that. And if you're good at it and you're paid for it, that's called your profession. I think you guys may be kind of figuring out where I'm going with this. If you're good at it and you get paid for it, but there's no love, it's just what you do. It's what we call a J-O-B, a job. You show up, you do the work, you get paid, and you can't wait for work to be over. When we had Seth Godin on our show, he, he talked about this, I think. He talked about the difference between work and art. Work, when you go to work, you feel like, when is it over? And when it's art, it's like, how long can I do this for? So what we're trying to do is combine those things. And people often ask me, Chris, how is it that you do what you do? Do you sleep? Do you have more hours? Is there a secret time machine? Are you cloning yourself? What is going on? Well, I want to be very clear. There's a whole team of people who are working with me, but even if they weren't working with me, I am filled with mission, passion, and things I get paid for. So I'm supercharged that way. And then the last one is the world needs it and you're paid for it, you, but you may not be good at it. So we're going to call this a vocation. And there's a difference between the word vocation and profession. Okay? And I don't know what the difference is, but I'm telling you there's a difference. There is. Ricky, do you know the difference between vocation and profession? I don't. I was going to ask you. Okay. Well, somebody has the internet. Look up what the word vocation means and then let me know. Okay? So ikigai is to say that we must find something here. This will be our reason for being. And this is really important. You, you must love it. You got to get paid for it. So all these things are in balance. And I just, it's such a Japanese concept. They come together. Now you may have seen a diagram like this before, a Venn diagram where they have three bubbles. Usually what, what you love, what you're good at, and what you're paid for, they leave out this part, what the world needs. And I just want to say something here. For 23 plus years, I ran this company. I, I love design. I love business. I'm pretty good at these things and motion graphics and making video. And we got paid handsomely for making commercials, less so music videos, but we were part of this circle. And I don't know why, but I felt like there was a hole missing inside of me that I couldn't fill. And I wanted to get out of this, even though I loved it and I was paid for it and I was good at it. There was something else. And it wasn't until I started to teach and my wife had noticed something. She had said to me, it's really great that you're able to impact the lives of a few students, eight, 10 students every semester, and you spend time and you give so much of yourself and I can see their eyes light up when you share something. But is there more? Is there more? Can you do more with your time? Is this a good exchange of your time? It sent me down a three to six month rabbit hole of searching and trying to figure it out. And then I figured it out. It's doing what I'm doing with you right now. I'm, I get to teach you the things that I know, what I'm good at, the things that I care about, that I love, and I'm going to make money off this, but I get to help the world. The world needs this. So for me, my ikigai is exactly this. It's the future teaching a billion people on planet Earth how to make money doing what they love. Now, so that we don't make this so abstract, I don't want this to be an abstract concept, Jonah's going to roll a video where we actually apply this in real time to some students from Cal State, Cal State Sacramento, Cal Sac. I think they were here from Sacramento or Sac State, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's in California and it's in Sacramento. That's all I know. I apologize. I totally should have prepared this part. But we're going to roll the video and then you guys are going to watch how we do this in real time. I'll see you back after the jump. Go ahead and leave your comments and I'll be answering them. I can narrow it down and, and yeah. do the same thing. Um, just stick with motion graphics. You can have a successful career with never exploring any other uh, form of design. I think it's kind of helpful for us right now in that a lot of us don't know what direction we want to go. Right. Um, so it can help inform those decisions yes. that we would make later down. Okay. That's you, right? You're still young, relatively speaking, and you need to explore lots of things, right? Because you don't know what you like. You don't know if you like sushi or salad or you want to go vegan, whatever it is. You're exploring lots of things. And that's really important. So there's that time that you want to explore. But anyways, at some point, you got to make a decision. And so you're going to pick one of these things. Like, I like that one. So we're going to pick something. Let's call it whatever it is, right? And then that begins another thing. Like for me, I like typography, but I could spend all my life studying type and still not get to the bottom of that thing. This timeline, let's say this is like uh, birth. Sorry, I'm going to butcher this baby. There's the baby. It's crawling, okay? Whatever. <laughs> and then 
It's game over. <coughs> Death. At some point in life, hopefully you recognize what that point is. Like, what do I really love? What am I good at? What does the market value? And get there. My theory is this. The sooner you can figure that out, the better off your life is. So I think it's important for us to explore. But as soon as you think you got it, go all in on that. We all agreed to that then. So what Kaylee is really saying is, well, we don't know yet. I think you're not knowing is you're, you're freshman, you're sophomore, but right into the middle of junior, you got to get to know what that is really fast. Here's the problem. I'm going to get real, real with you, okay? Most schools don't have enough teachers, period. Most schools. Most schools do not have enough good teachers that teach the thing that you love. So what they do is they get a couple of teachers, and they teach a lot of different subjects, some of which they know a lot about, most of which they don't know anything about. Unfortunately, you're the sucker who has to take those classes. And so you're getting taught by somebody who's never reached the top of their field, hasn't done it enough, and now you're getting some pretty diluted information. Sometimes it even looks like they're reading the book before they teach the class. So this is where the danger is. So we're <coughs> trying to explore lots of things. They're going to expose you a lot of things. So what they want to do is they tell you this story, and it's a fantastic story they tell all students in, in all schools. You know what's going to get you hired? Breath of work. That's what they tell you. You need to be a diversified human being. And that's what the market's going to hire. And then you get out in school, out of school, you graduate, you put in a cap and gown, you do the walk, and you're like, then you reach out to me. This is when I see you. Chris, I got no work. It's been two years out of school. The only thing I can do is production work at a local print copy shop. That's what I got. Kaylee, do you have an idea about what you love, what you think you're good at, and what the market needs? So I went back to school because I changed you're a little bit older yeah i'm okay. older um so i changed uh what i was doing and i know that i love design and so it's just finding out those uh instances of that what were you before um i worked in the outdoor industry so i did a lot of recreation i was a river guide and climbing guide and stuff like that so you're an active outdoors yeah. person mm -hmm. and then at some point you're like you know what i i want to have a career and i want to do this other thing so you go back to school so you have life experience okay so you're going to school and now you have this graphic design degree so what do you think you're going to focus in on um, I've always been interested in, in like infographics and in translating oh, okay. information yeah. um, in a way that's a lot more easy to be understood. Yes. Um, I've always been interested in motion graphics, which I know can somewhat go together, but also can be totally different. Yes. Um, um, but I haven't had that much experience with that. So I'm really excited to um, try to dig into that on my spare time because that's actually been taken out of the program. Um, okay. And so the program's great in kind of getting you started, but yeah. it's it's only a starting point. Okay. Now I wanted you to go back in time for me, <clears throat> just a little bit, just humor me. I want you to go back in time like when you're like between 7 to 11 years old. What is it that you're doing all your free time? What are all the things that you love to do? It was all art. Like what? Be super yeah, hyper specific. Absolutely. So I spent most of the time in a sketchbook with um, pencils, um, what did you draw? I would just doodle stuff from movies. Um, okay. I loved uh, Lord of the Rings, so, you know, a bunch of fantasy stuff. Um, everything from my daily life as well. Um, so I like to, I would also, um, what is now lettering, um, but just write down information um, in a way that's easier and visually um, kind of aesthetic and combining uh, essentially infographics with, uh, with words and text. Um, just doing that as a kid, I would do, yeah. Are you a pretty good illustrator? Uh, I'm, I'm all right. You're right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Any, anything else you can recall? Did you make stuff? Is anything else like... Yeah, I used to craft a lot. So craft. when I was okay, really little, yeah, I would make tangible 3D things from paper. I would glue, I would um, tape things into make boxes and things that you could open and a okay. lot of different, yeah, okay. um, prototypes, I guess. Can I tell you a little secret about myself? Sure. When I was much younger, the only thing I ever wanted when I was younger, and you guys will judge me for it, and it's okay. All I wanted was an Easy Bake Oven. I know. Easy Bake Oven, because I dreamt about making cookies and things so I can go and sell them. <laughs> that was the young entrepreneur in me trying to get out. But then my brother's like, so you want to be a girl? So there's some gender issues, like, you know, these <laughs> kinds of things, association with that. So it was kind of like rough. So I, I kind of killed that little dream. But maybe there's something there. Is there anything else that you want to pull out? Something that you may have like, oh, somebody said you're not supposed to do that, so you didn't do it. And always recommend going the safe route, which ended up not being so safe. Um, That's the problem with safety. Yeah. Um, and so I couldn't understand that aspect of playing it the safe way. Yeah. Um, 
And so I still went out and did adventurous things, but I kind of put art to the side for a little while. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, I don't know if you guys can see what's happening here. Kaylee has a bunch of diverse interests. She's done lots of things. She likes making, crafting, drawing, doodling. It seems like you're just really a creative person. So I'm really happy to hear that you found your way back into art and design after having done what your parents thought you, you know, that kind of stuff. And so you're back into design. Can you find a way to bring all these things together? That's the magic of creativity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And an, an accountant, an attorney, a doctor will probably just list all these things for you. Here's all your symptoms, Kaylee. This is what you suffer from. Creative itis or something like that. You suffer from something, right? Mm -hmm. But creative people are like, oh, I see a connection between this, this, that, and it looks like this. That's what creativity is. It's about being able to pull things that don't seem to belong together and find some kind of beautiful, elegant combination. And if you can do that, that's your superpower. So here's what I think. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out there. What if you can combine a job where you make infographics doing hand lettering for an outdoor recreation company? Would that make you happy or no? That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so infographics, outdoors, uh, you know, recreation, um, lettering. Okay. So if you can work for one of those companies doing that, or many companies like that, well, how do we make that cooler? What if you could build 3D mock-ups and installations and point-of-purchase displays? So you bring in all that crafty stuff that you used to do that you haven't looked at in a while. Wouldn't that be cool? So you're going to create the entire brand experience for outdoor recreation companies. Backpacking, sh hiking shoes, tents, whatever it is. Wouldn't that be really cool? That would be pretty cool, yeah. See, are you getting excited about your own fake career? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So that's what you want to do. Now that you know that, take all these weird classes and say, does that plug into this dream or not? So this is where you get to take what you want and combine it into something. So if the instructor gives you an assignment to do like corporate rebranding for some airline or some tech company, I don't feel that. That doesn't speak to me. That portfolio piece does not take me here. So you want you to tell the teacher, do you mind if I do it for... What's, what's that favorite outdoor company of yours? Uh, there's, there's one called Hego. That's Hego? Yeah. Okay, Hego. Okay. You're like, you mind if I just do the same thing but for Hego but change these kind of parameters? And most teachers, if you approach them the right way, they'll be cool. Then you can tailor that to what you need. Because at the end of the day, I need you to remember this. After graduation, you're kind of dead to them. So while you're in school, <laughs> they're dead to you. Just take care of your life. Because when you're in the unemployment line, when you're serving coffee at uh, Starbucks as a barista, that advice they gave you, you have to live with the consequences, not them. So here's the thing. It's hard to hit a target when you don't know where the target is. It's hard to score a goal when you don't know where the goal is. Once you know the goal, once you know the target, man, everything comes into clarity, into focus. So classes move from here to here, classes move from here to here. And that's how you do it. That's the kind of breath that these guys dreamt for you, but they didn't know how to articulate. So now you have to do this part, the convergence of those things, and now you can express it this way. And we're back. Whew. We tried something new today. First of all, thank you everybody who's sticking around for this live stream slash pre-recorded thing. We're trying to blend the best of both where we can actually have a nice meaty piece of content for you that's been edited so you don't waste any time watching it and to do some live things so I can demonstrate with you and also respond to comments. Both Jaden and Ricky are here now monitoring your comments, so go ahead and write any, some, any of the comments down. I wanted to just quickly recap, like what happened here with is her name Kaylee with Kaylee? What did we do there? So what I wanted to do was to explore to her without the parameters of needing to make money or anything else, like what she loved. And it's a very useful exercise to think back between the ages of seven and probably 14 when you weren't so wrapped up in the world and adulting that you could just sit there and think about the things that you love. And if you travel back in time, a good trigger is to think back to the house that you lived in when you were seven years old. Try to think about the street name the car that your parents drove, the color, and it'll start to trigger memories. As I'm doing more research on how we learn, it's interesting how a smell, a sight, a texture will trigger memories. So we as human beings, we record everything. It's our ability to recall things is the difficult part. So some things will trigger memory. So think back. Think back to when you're seven, 
eight, nine, ten years old, what did you love to do? And make a list. So I love making lists. What I would suggest that you do is this. Make four columns and just try to fill up each one, irregardless of anything, any kind of reality. Don't ground it in that. And just write as many things as you can. Remember what you loved. Generally speaking, what you're good at requires skill, requires training, and re requires practice. But if you put enough time and effort into it, you get good at these things. Sometimes they're the same, and sometimes they're not. It just depends on the opportunities you were given in life. Next up is make a list of where opportunity exists in the world today. What is trending? What is shifting in the culture of today? What's happening right now? And we'll go through this exercise one more time to help solidify this and make it super concrete for you. And last but not least, think about what the world needs right now. Forget about your skill set, what you love. Just sit down and think, what do we need? What does the world want right now? What are big problems that really could use some help? And make a list. And then step back and look at those four columns and try to build a bridge between as many of the words you wrote up as possible. Some of you guys have been part of my, either my, my keynote or one of my workshops on finding your superpower. I do all of this, except for I add a fifth bubble into it. When I shared this, finding your superpower framework with somebody, they're like, oh, that's just like Icky Guy. Chris, do you know about Icky Guy? I said, no. That's what led me here, okay? And while we were at uh, the break, I found out the difference between profession and vocation. Profession usually requires training and education. It's profession, no, while vocation is probably like uh, somebody who doesn't go to school, but they have innate skill. They still have to get training, but it's a very different kind of training. So that's the difference between vocation and profession, just written in blue here. So what we're going to do is this. My friend, Jaden, he's going back to school pretty soon. He has to finish up school, and he's sad, and we're sad to, to see him go. But since he is not quite done with school, this is the perfect time to apply this exercise to him. And maybe we'll do one for me too. So I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to use my red marker here. And before I do that, before I do this with Jaden, are there any questions worth asking, answering? No? So there is a guy he asking that what if uh, his childhood is not so good? How can he, you know, figure it out? Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm sorry, and, and I'm sorry, I, I know that there's a spectrum of experiences that we all have in terms of how we're brought up, that our parents, sometimes well-meaning, sometimes not even well-intentioned, and, and we suffer through that. There, there may be moments, even in the darkness, and even if you've had to deal with abuse or drugs or just whatever you've had to deal with, there's still glimmers of happiness in there somewhere. It may require greater effort for you to find it, one of the things that you love could be like what I did, which is I love playing Dungeons and Dragons. I love role-playing games. I love reading comic books. And this didn't have anything to do with my external world. It was just me and my experience being able to do that. I also, for a period of time, enjoyed skateboarding, although I was not good at, at it at all, as, as evidence, as the marks on my shins here, okay? So just do your best to kind of push past the dark memories and the, the bad moments in your life and just try to find the glimmers of excitement or hope. And if you come up empty, there's nothing there. Just think about today, like what is it that you love to do? When nobody's watching and nobody cares, what is it you love to do? It could be playing video games, it could be hunting or fishing, it could be building boats, whatever it is that you like to do, just make that list as long as possible without any regard for what pays well. That's what you need to do there. So any other questions, Jaden? No. No, okay, all right. Jaden, would you like to do this exercise or do you want me to do it on myself? Are you ready to do this? Maybe I can try. Yes. You can try? Okay, that's, that's the right attitude, first of all. Let's just try. There's no consequences, right? You can just tell me. You want to come in? No, go into the chat. He doesn't have to. He can if he wants. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, my brother from another mother. Jaden's hey, here. Okay. All right. Hey, guy. Okay, so let's talk about the things that you love to do. What do you love to do that gives you such pleasure and joy? You don't have to be good at it. Just what do you love? So I love to make videos. Okay. Make videos. I love to um, do some design when I have some free time. Okay. And lastly is uh, I love to share my knowledge with people. So you like to teach? Yes. These all sound very professional oriented. Okay. Is there something else that you love that isn't one of these things? Just for pure joy. Do you like eating? Do you like... Yeah, I, I, I love to try different type of noodles. Just noodles. Okay, he loves noodles. Okay, that's good. Interesting. That's cool. Do you like traveling? 
Mm, yes. Okay. I do. But you I see? don't have enough money to go. So okay. that's, that's something I would love to do. This is fantastic. So as a thought experiment, as an exercise, do not root this in reality at all. Mm -hmm. Just what would you do if you could do anything? What would you want to explore? What makes you happy? So you're still stuck in this part. It's like the world right now. Mm -hmm. Just focus on the things that you love. Anything that you want to write there. Do you like watching anime, playing video games, jump roping? What do you love? Do you I like to buy fashion? Like, are you a fashion guy? Yeah, I would love to collect a lot of shoes. Or okay, sneaker. you're a sneakerhead. Yes, because I used to sell sneakers. So you I did? Really oh, yes. I didn't know that about you. Okay, what else? Mm, I would love to play basketball all day. Okay, you good at it? Uh, kind of. Okay. <laughs> Can this be verified? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I know. This is where like, I break my own rules, right? <laughs> Ricky is like, calling me. He's like, foul, <laughs> yellow flag on the field. You just told him you could do anything, and then you break that. Okay, what else? Mm, I think uh, I would love to... Yeah, I think that's it. That is for now. Yes. Okay. So this is really interesting. I spend a lot of time, personally, thinking about the things that I love. My list would be so deep, you don't even know. Mm -hmm. My wife's like, how many hobbies can a human being have? And it's like, I love it all. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we'll put a park, we'll hold off on that. Okay. What do you think you're good at? It doesn't have to be the same thing. It mm -hmm. could be totally different things. Forget this part. What are you good at? I think I'm good at uh, motivating people. Okay. Uh, I think I'm good at uh, making content. Okay. Sometimes cooking. Oh, yeah, I hear you're a pretty good cook. Okay, what else? Um, I'm starting to see something in my head already. Keep going. I think I'm good at, you know, mm, be persistent whenever I do something. So okay. I don't you, usually quit. So You're not a quitter? Yes. Okay. Go on. Why are you laughing at? <laughs> Why <are> you laugh? <laughs> Keep going. You can laugh. Mm. It's totally fine. Keep going. I think. Well, this 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 exercise is quite hard. Yeah. Mm. You like to learn, right? Yes. But that's not up here anywhere, is it? Mm, yeah, maybe I'm good at learning and trying some new thing because creative people have the, you know, shining object syndrome where. Yeah. I see something new. I would love to try it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I think it's, it's good for now. It's pretty good? Okay. Yes. And then we're going to get to like what, what opportunities exist, where, where do you see the world moving? So it seems like a lot of people have predicted the death of print and the death of advertising. Mm -hmm. So I would not put those like those are trending. Those are opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's a cultural movement behind those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in the world right now? Where do you see opportunity? I think the opportunity right now is that uh, you can make content for company so that they can promote themselves. Okay, so content marketing? Yes. Okay. What else? Keep going. And uh, maybe we can try to solve their problem by because people have a lot of problems, so we can use what we learn by doing design sprint, for example. Or design thinking. Oh. Okay, design thinking is trending, yes. right? Yes. yes. And I'll help you out here. What, and this, usually everybody can help because these are kind of universally like what's happening, what we're recognizing. Yes. I think there are opportunities right now in education. Yes, People that's are true. looking for more affordable and effective ways of teaching. Yes. Uh, sustainable living, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Those minimalism. Are, those are minimalism, right? Yes. Not necessarily the same thing, but minimalism. Okay. What else? Mm. Um, the digital nomad. This is the thing with young people now, right? Yes. Ricky? Yes. To live wherever you want in the world and do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> van <laughs> okay. Um, what do we just call that? Uh, digital yeah. nomad. Oh, van life. Or which something. is right, right next to, to van life, right? Because now we we <laughs> live in a world where, just with an internet connection, you could do work anywhere. Yes. Okay. Um, um, is it pay for it? No, no, we're not the world needs yet. Yes. Just like what opportunities, what seems to be trending, what's happening in the world right now? Uh, we, well, we know the social network is not getting any. 
better, not any uh, weaker. <laughs> no, I wouldn't use. It's just growing, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Hmm. Maybe there would be some great advances in medicine. We know about CRISPR, right? And and now they can like three D print anything. Yes. So, so this like is called uh, on demand manufacturing. Oh. Right. Now, I also know a couple of things that you guys may not know of is we are craving now transcendent experiences. Transcendent, it's like a educated word, transcendent experiences. And things are becoming dematerialized. Do you know what that means? Like, yeah. I'll explain both of them in a second. Yes. A trend in, transcendent experience is like when you buy something or you go somewhere and it's more than the thing itself. Like when you, when you open up um, a beautifully packaged good, mm -hmm. it makes you feel like there's beauty and there's art and it makes you feel hopeful and inspired. That's, that's what we're talking about. Okay. okay. It doesn't have to be like going to Disneyland or watching a movie, but anything that you experience that lifts you up like that. Mm -hmm. Dematerialization is as we're moving towards the future, what's happening is we're consuming less physical things and more intangible things. Okay. I'll give you an example. Dematerialization is we used to buy CDs for music and DVDs for movies. Mm -hmm. Now all of that stuff is living in the cloud. People of my generation or older are uncomfortable with that we like to have tangible things. We feel like we have to have some kind of possession, mm -hmm. right? But it's like the more things you own, the more things own you. <laughs> and you and your generation is like, let's put everything in a cloud, I'll put all our files, we'll have to just trust that it'll be there, mm -hmm. and we don't want to own physical things anymore. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I see. All right. Okay, so that, I just want to explain those things here. Okay, let's keep going now. What does the world need right now? There's, it's similar to paid for, mm -hmm. but what does the world need right now? I think new... Innovation needs innovation. Okay. Anything in any specific area? Like in technology. Okay. There. Okay. But like to do what? To make people life easier. Okay. Okay. So you're talking about the world needs uh, automation, right? Yes. That's innovation of using technology to remove. Uh, tasks like re uh, what is that called menial tasks mm -hmm. is that okay yes menial tasks is like should not be the work of human beings okay and what else the world mm, need better company to stand and, you know stand up and help the user or something say that in a different way mm, the world need uh, like better company that make good product for them, good product for a user. Okay, it's not exactly, okay, uh, they just need, how, how do you know it's good product? Mm, they solve a problem that the uh, user Everybody have. could argue that mm -hmm. maybe, maybe this is tied into uh, a better product is one that thinks of the entire life cycle of the product mm -hmm. so that all the components can be recycled or it's kind of, does the least amount of harm. Okay. Okay. I think the world needs that, right? Yes. Um, more conscious capitalism. I'll say that. Okay. Oof. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just, I was waiting for an opportunity to say it. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And I think we want more equity in the world, right? You know what equity means? Equal opportunity for people of all shapes, sizes, colors, races, uh, religious preference or none. We need more equity. Yes. I think we need more transparency, right? True. Yeah. Uh, and we need, um, I, I think we need to, oddly enough, feel more connected. Accessible. Because, uh, you know, connection is like, as we push apart in the digital space, like you and I could sit on a train ride and not talk to each other because we're connected social, like on, <laughs> on apps, but not, you know, human to human yes. experience. Yes. And what was the next one that you said? Mm, accessible. Everything accessible? needs to be more accessible okay, for yeah. everybody. Right. Yeah. And through platforms like Google and other platforms out there, yes. everything is getting tied together. It's like 
the world's knowledge database is all mm -hmm. being pulled together and shared. Yes. Uh, Wikipedia, all those kinds of things. This is fantastic. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to step back. And this is usually the magic trick. We need to step back and start to tie in as many things as possible so we can get to your icky guy. Mm -hmm. Your reason for being. Okay. The thing that you live for. Okay. The magical part is when you're able to do this, you'll never be late for work again. You'll never feel work is a chore. Mm -hmm. You would do something that you love and you'll make money doing it. That's so terrific. Okay. So what I would encourage you to do at some point, Jaden, and everybody that's watching is to take your own list and circle a bunch of things and see how you can bring them together. And this is the gift that you were given as a creative human being to see things that other people can't see, to be a lateral thinker, to be a divergent thinker, to grab these things and put them together. If you can take as many of these things together and put it together in the center and to make one career, one profession, you'll be working, playing, having fun, doing something that's mission-driven all at the same time. Right. Okay. Right? Do you yes. have some ideas yet? Mm, I think I have some idea already. Okay. Yes. So what we'll do is this, uh, so we don't want to spend more of your time. Jaden will think about this, and then mm -hmm. he will then drop it in the comments somewhere. Okay. Okay. Jaden, will you do that? Yes, I will. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Jaden. All right. Thank all you. Right. Now, those are the rest of you guys that are watching this, hopefully you've played along and you've made your list. Now, I'll explain to you briefly how I found my icky guy in the future. Let me find my marker, first of all. And any other comments we need to, anything else we need to address? No. Okay. Now, I won't draw this because it'll take up too much time, but I'll explain to you something. So for many years, over two decades, I showed up to work, I worked in my company, I made money, I provided for my family, I did the responsible adult thing, save for my kids' college education, save for my retirement plan, and it all was working out really well. It took me to this point in time in which I was talking to my financial advisor, his name is John. I said, John, how many more years do I need to work so that I can retire? This was a couple of years ago. And he said, Chris, I ran the numbers and I have some news for you. Somebody says that, you're like, oh my God, it's going to be a really long time. And he says, the way that you live, the amount of money that you spend in your lifestyle, you could have retired two or three years ago. And that was a shocker for me. And I looked at my wife, I'm like, why am I working? What you, you got me going to the salt mine every single day. And she goes, I thought you loved to go to work. I said, no, I go to work to provide for our family. It looks like love because I put the passion and energy into it, but I'm missing something here. And so with that revelation that I didn't need to work anymore, I had to ask myself to dig deep inside, why do you show up to work every single day? And this is where it takes me on the next adventure and what I've been doing the last five years. Okay, so let me outline it for you. I love design. I love typography. I love teaching. I love learning. I love sharing. I love helping people. This makes me feel, feel really good. What I learned in school and in my job as running the company, I've, I learned entrepreneurial skills. I learned business management, sales, marketing, negotiations. I, I got really good at doing video production, directing a story, leading a team. Those are all skills that I learned by going to school and developing. Luckily for me, they paid very handsomely and doing work for our big Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies, they had hundreds of thousands of dollars for their budget. So I was able to apply what I was good at, what I loved to make something that people rewarded me for quite handsomely. And I was smart. I saved a lot of that money. I didn't spend it frivolously. I didn't go out and buy the fancy cars and watches and all that kind of stuff. But this is the hole that I was missing. So for 15 years, I taught at a variety of schools, private art schools, and I did that and I loved it. And I loved it so much, but I thought, that more people could benefit from this kind of education, this kind of training, but it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist because tuition today, last time I checked, is, get this, in the U.S., $22,000 a semester. Get your head wrapped around that. So if you have to go to school for eight semesters, you're going to be out over $160,000 just in tuition alone. Don't mention supplies, books, um, rent, food. What's that? I was going to say the interest on the student loans, too. That's where the interest afterwards will kill you. OK, so by the time you're done, you're talking about over two hundred fifty thousand dollars 
for an education. And I thought there is a better way because also what's trending, opportunities that exist are distance-based learning, uh, a global connected network, this idea that th there's, there's free platforms that allow any content creator to share what it is that they know. And I wanted to exploit that. Once I figure it out, that becomes the future and this is what we're doing today. So I found my Ikigai and I hope you're able to find this for yourself because today, every single morning, I get up when the sun comes up, I go to sleep like after usually around 12 or one o'clock at night and I'm not tired because I'm fueled with this purpose, the mission, the passion, and I get paid for it. When you don't get paid for something, after a while it could feel like you're gonna get into burnout. So you have to make progress there as well. So finding that balance. And we're living in the best time ever in the history of man uh, in that we have great technology. We're connected for the most part. Anybody out there that's listening to